today from the shed I'm going to read you something from my new book. It's called Peaches for Monsieur le Curé and it's out on May the 23rd. In the States it's called Peaches for Father Francis, so don't buy them both. This is the very first chapter. Someone once told me that in France alone, a quarter of a million letters are delivered every year to the dead. What she didn't tell me is that sometimes the dead write back. It came on the wind of Ramadan. Not that I knew it then, of course. Paris gets windy in August, and the dust makes little dervishes that skate and scour the sidewalks and leave little sparkling flakes of grit on your eyelids and your face, while the sun glares down like a blind white eye and no one feels like eating. Paris is mostly dead right now, except for tourists and people like us who can't afford a holiday, and the river stinks and there is no shade, and you'd do almost anything to walk barefoot in a field somewhere or to sit under a tree in a wood. Who knows how it is, of course, who wasn't made for city life? And when Rosette is bored, she makes mischief. And I make chocolates for no one to buy. And Anouk goes to the internet cafe on the Rue de la Paix to talk with her friends on Facebook, or walks up to Montmartre Cemetery and watches the feral cats that slink among the houses of the dead, with the sun coming down like a guillotine between the slices of shadow. Anouk at 15. Where does the time go? Like perfume in a bottle, however tight the seal, evaporating so slyly that when you open it to look, all you find is a scent of smear, where once there was enough to spare. How are you, my little Anouk? What's happening in your strange little world? Are you happy, restless, content? How many more of these days will we have before you leave my orbit for good? shooting away like a rogue satellite, vanishing into the stars. This train of thought is far from new. Fear has been my shadow ever since Anouk was born, but this summer the fear has grown, blooming monstrously in the heat. Perhaps it's because of the mother I lost and the one I found four years ago. Or maybe it's the memory of Zosie de l'Alba, the taker of hearts, who almost robbed me of everything and who showed me how fragile our lives can be, how easily the house of cards can fall at the smallest breath of wind. Fifteen. Fifteen! At her age I'd already travelled the world. My mother was dying. The word home meant any place we stayed for the night. I'd never made a real friend. And love, well, love was like the torches that burn at the terraces of cafes at night. A source of fleeting warmth, touch, a face half glimpsed in firelight. Anouk, I hope, will be different. Already she is beautiful, although she's quite unaware of this. One day she will fall in love. What will happen to us then? Still, I tell myself, there's time. She still sometimes talks about Lanskine. Even though she is happy enough here, Paris seems more like a stopping place on some as yet untravelled road than a home to which she will always return. Of course, a houseboat is not a house. It lacks the conviction of mortar and stone. And Anouk, with the curious nostalgia that affects the very young, remembers in rosy colours the little chocolaterie across from the church, with its striped awning and hand-painted sign and her eyes are wistful when she speaks of the friends she left behind, of Jeanne Audreau and Luc Clermont, and of streets where no one is afraid to walk at night and of front doors that are never locked. Still on the whole, Paris treats us well, for all its anonymity, but sometimes on a day like this, like Anouk and like Rosette, I find myself wishing for something more. More than a boat on a river that stinks. More than this cauldron of stale air. More than this forest of towers and spires or the tiny galley in which I make my chocolates. 
more of that word, that deceptive word, that eater of lives, that malcontent, that straw that broke the camel's back, demanding what exactly? I'm very happy with my life. I'm happy with the man I love. I have two wonderful daughters and a job doing what I was meant to do. It's not much of a living, but it helps pay for the mooring and who takes on building and carpentry work that keeps the four, as a, the four of us afloat. What more could I possibly want? It began in the galley the other day. I was making truffles. In this heat, only truffles are safe. Anything else runs the risk of damage, either from refrigeration or from the heat that gets into everything. Temper the couverture on the slab. Heat it gently on the hob. Add spices, vanilla and cardamom. Wait for just the right moment, transmuting simple cookery into an act of domestic magic. What more could I have wanted? Well, maybe a breeze, the tiniest breeze, no more than a kiss in the nape of my neck, where my hair, pinned up in a messy knot, was already stinging with summer sweat. The tiniest of breezes. What? What possible harm could that do? And so I called the wind, just a little. A warm and playful little wind that makes cats skittish and races the clouds. V'là le bon vent, v'là le joli vent, v'là le bon vent, l'ami m'appelle. It really wasn't very much, just that little gust of wind and a glamour like a smile in the air, bringing with it a distant scent of pollen and spices and gingerbread. All I really wanted was to comb the clouds from the summer sky, to bring the scent of other places to my corner of the world. V'là le bon vent, v'là le joli vent. And all around the left bank, the sweet wrappers flew like butterflies, and the playful wind tugged at the skirts of a woman crossing the Pont des Arts. A Muslim woman in the face veil, niqab, of which there are so many these days. And I caught a glimpse of colours from underneath the long black veil. And just for a moment I thought I saw a shimmy in the scorching air, and the shadows of the wind-blown trees scribbled crazy, abstract designs across the dusty water. V'là le bon vent, v'là le joli vent. The woman glanced down from the bridge at me. I couldn't see her face, just the eyes, coal-rimmed under the niqab. For a moment I saw her watching me and wondered if I knew her somehow. I raised a hand and waved to her. Between us, the Seine and the rising scent of chocolate from the galley's open window. Try me, taste me. For a moment, I thought she was going to wave back. The dark eyes dropped. She turned away. And then she was gone across the bridge. A faceless woman dressed in black. Into the wind of Ramadan.